Let's go on study. You have studied the pharmacological effects of clopramazine. It is based on the blockade of dopamine receptor alpha and serotonin in histamine one receptor. But you know, the blockade of dopamine receptor is the main mechanism. So effects on the CNS are the basic effects for the therapeutic applications of clopromazine. So look at the disease include. The first one is schizophrenia. Antipsychotic drugs are effective in eliminating delusions, hallucinations, anxiety, and manic episodes of schizophrenic patients. So here, it's mainly used to relieve the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. If the patient has onset of this schizophrenia, it is acute schizophrenia. It is more obvious. This effect, effect is more obvious. In the treatment of type 2, uh, type 2 symptoms, negative, symptoms of schizophrenia. The first generation agents of antipsychotic drugs are not effective, even invalid, you know. But in the treatment of type 1 schizophrenia, clopromazine is very effective, including some organic schizophrenia. But it couldn't cure thoroughly. It is necessary to use clopromazine for long term, even whole life. But you know, in the long term therapy, this drug, because of so many pharmacological effects caused by clopromazine, yeah, it must induce many adverse reactions. The second uh, therapeutic application is clopromazine can be used to, to prevent nausea and vomiting. If the emesis is caused by some drugs like morphine, cardioglycosides, estrogen, tetracyclines, you know, many drugs induce adverse effect of GI tract, including Amesis. You will study these drugs. This amesis adverse effect is relatively common caused by them. So to control this amesis, clopromazine is effective. If some disease like uh, uremia, cancer, radiation sickness, the, oh, this disease also cause amesis. It's also relatively common symptoms in this disease. So this uh, amesis, clopromazine, also is effective. But it is not effective for motion sickness caused by vestibular stimulation. You know, this amesis also, it is related to dopamine receptor in the vomiting center. So that's why clopromazine is effective. And because of hiccup center is very close to the vomiting center, so clopromazine also has inhibition on this hiccup center. That's why it also used to treat refractory hiccup. Because of regulation on the body temperature, you know, this clopromazine, because it also has effect on the body temperature regulation. So combined with physical hemo, uh, uh, hypoxemia, this drug can be used as, can be used in hypothermic anesthesia. Like a, Use, by using ice bike or ice bars, the body temperature can be decreased by clopromazine, even to 
30 Celsius degree. You know, during these conditions, the lower body temperature, the metabolism in the body is decreased. So, BMR is decreased, decreased in oxygen consumption. So, it can help us to protect the brain and heart from ischemic injury during surgery. Actually, this mainly, this hypothermic anesthesia, it is actually commonly used in some complicated cardiovascular or craniocerebral, craniocerebral surgery. You know, under the general anesthesia, accompanied with physical hypoxemia, to decrease the BMR, that conditions hypothermic anesthesia. It can improve tissue's tolerance to hypoxia and blocking blood flow. Next one, hibernation therapy. Hibernation therapy, clopromazine concurrently used with promethazine and the pacidine are applied for artificial hibernation. You know, this drug can decrease the body temperature according to the environment temperature. It also requires for uh, requires physical cooling, such as ice mic or ice bath. And you know, this drug, clopromazin, also has potentiation on the other depressive central nervous agents, depressive and uh, central depressive agents like pro promethazine and pacity. Promethazine, it is one histamine receptor antagonist. Uh, the first generation of histamine 1 receptor antagonist, they also have depressive effect on seeing eyes. To induce sleepiness is very common. And pacidine, this drug is similar to morphine. It also has a sedation effect on the seeing eyes. So when these drugs used in combination with clopromazine, their depressive effect on seeing eyes or can be enhanced by clopromazine. And with the physical cooling, it, the body temperature of the patients decreased. So during this deep sleep, you know, during deep sleep caused by these drugs, with the decrease the body temperature, you know, at these conditions, the body reduced BMR and uh, it decreased the oxygen consumption. So the tissue resistance to hypoxia, or oh, mm, the conditions lack of energy, it, you know. This ability is increased. So, for the patients with some serious disease, like serious trauma, serious infectious shock, and uh, even some ardent fever, or central ardent fever, or ardent fever convulsion, even um, Thyroid glands crisis. This hibernation therapy is very important. It can help the doctor and nurse to gain time for other measures, even to find some uh, etiological treatment to save the patient's life, help the patients go through to go through these serious conditions. It's very helpful. So this is artificial hibernation, also caused by 
hibernation therapy. And you know, it is not to only use chlorpromazine. Usually, it requires a lytic cocktail, including chlorpromazine, promethazine, and pethidine. This is the common used agents for hibernation therapy. Try to remember this. OK. What are the adverse effects of chlorpromazine? You know, in the treatment of schizophrenia, just now I mentioned, it often requires a long-term therapy, even whole life. And how about other antipsychotic drugs? Let's go on. You just studied therapeutic applications of chlorpromazine. It's mainly used for the treatment of schizophrenia, some amnesis, and uh, for the hypothermic anesthesia and uh, artificial hibernation. And you know, for the hypothermic anesthesia and uh, hibernation therapy, it just requires a transient uses of chlorpromazine. But sometimes, like uh, anti-emetic action, it usually maybe requires a long therapy, but you know, in the treatment of schizophrenia, it always requires a long therapy. So this drug, chlorpromazine, it can block several different receptors in the CNS, even peripheral tissue. So it will induce many adverse reactions, including this. OK, let's study one by one. Because this drug mainly blocks dopamine receptor in seeing eyes. And uh, you know, in the seeing eyes, it includes several different path dopamine pathways. The blockage of dopamine receptors in mesolimbic and the mesocortical pathway. This result is related to the clinical uses of the in treatment of psychosis. And the blockage of dopamine 2 like receptor in CTZ. It is uh, the basic pharmacological effect of uses, uh, using um, pharmacopromazine in the amnesis caused by some drugs or disease. But you know, there are other more Im also important um, dopaminergic pathway, substantial nigra on the stratum. You know, this dopamine receptor, once it is blocked, it often causes an imbalance between the dopaminergic and cholinergic pathway. So, you know, remember, it decreased the cholinergic pathway function. So, it will induce symptoms like PD. It is caused by extra pyramidal symptoms, EPIs. And the effects on tuberal infantibular, this pathway, because of dopamine 2-like receptor in this pathway blocked by chlorpromazine. You know, this pathway is related to many hormones, endocrine hormones release. So it also induces adverse effect on endocrine system. OK. So the more important is EPIs, extra pyramidal symptoms. You know, in the treatment of the schizophrenia, for some patients, it even requires whole life therapy. So these are more important. It includes four reactions. Now, Based on the blockage of dopamine receptor in extra pyramidal nervous system, it for, uh, often induces some reactions in early period. First one is PD syndrome. You know, the patient has some symptoms like PD, like muscular rigidity, tremor, you know, resting tremor, and musk-like facial expression. On this PD, 
it's uh, caused by club promising occurs more in the elderly people. You know, with the aging, the patients also uh, maybe have a degenerative disease of PD. So, and this sometimes maybe occurs in within one month of using clopromazine. Some patients, maybe especially some young patients with schizophrenia after using clopromazine, maybe just uh, several days later, uh, the patients will show some symptoms of acute dystonia. Acute dystonia, it often means the patients have some uncoordinated movement of trunk or extremities. For example, spastic reticulis. You know, the patient's posture of head and neck, like this picture here. And uh, torticollis. You know, the patients will have some compulsive opening mouth, extended tongue. You know, these are uncoordinated movement because these symptoms occur in several days of using clopromazine. That's why it caused by acute dystonia. This adverse effects occurs more in the young people than PD syndrome. Agasthenia. Agasthenia. It means the patients will show some symptoms like compulsive and involuntary restlessness. So for the patients with agasthenia, it is difficult to say it there quietly. You know, in the treatment of schizophrenia, once the symptoms of schizophrenia is abolished by clopromazine, but the patient has these symptoms of axesia. Actually, at that condition, the patients are very clear about this adverse reactions caused by clopromazine. So actually, at that condition, it always reduces the patient's life quality. And these three EPIs, it is related to blockade of dopamine receptor by clopromazine. So, you know, it, clopromazine at these conditions, it induces imbalance between cholinergic pathway and dopaminergic pathway. Cholinergic pathway predominate because of this dopamine receptor blocked by clopromazine. So that's why the patients will show these adverse reactions. So similar to the treatment of PD, remember? You know, try to recover this balance, this balance between the dopaminergic pathway and the cholinergic pathway. You know, because here dopamine receptor is blocked by clopromazine. Some dopamine receptor agonists, it, they are invalid. You know, so for the treatment of PD caused by clopromazine, don't use levodopa. You should choose anticholinergic drug like trihexyphenidyl. It is effective to con control these EPIs. But you know, some other patients maybe shows tardy dyskinesia. This sometimes is a late occurring syndrome of abnormal chloroform movement. You know, this symptoms is irreversible. So once the patient has these adverse reactions, it often worsens the patient's life. Actually, no treatment are effective to control this tardy dyskinesia uh, because it is caused by dopamine receptor sensitivity increased or oh, because of the long-term 
blockade of dopamine receptor by clopromazine, the body released more endogenous dopamine. It always may be related to these reactions of the body. So actually, it has no good measurement to control this type of dyskinesia yearly, even after uh, withdrawal of clopromazine, the patients still have tidy skin there because it is irreversible. So just the worst in the patient's life. And you know, this is three early period of an, uh, EPIs. If we can use anticholinergic drug to treat, we also can decrease the dosage of clobramazine even with gel. Maybe these adverse reactions may be recovered. But how do this can be there? Because it is irreversible. It still exists. OK. Act on the scene, guys. This drug, clobramazine, also induces some behavior effects in some uh, patients in the uh, treatment of schizophrenia. You know, this is uh, similar to some new psychosis. You know, behavior effects include toxic psychosis. Actually, this toxic, this psychosis is different from the primary disease of schizophrenia. If you are a doctor trying to distinguish the symptoms of them, and a few patients after using clopromazine maybe induce severe attack of epilepsy, even convulsion. You know, clopromazine also block alpha and beta receptor in the peripheral tissue. It has some adverse effects on ANIs because of alpha one blockage and blockage. In the blood vessels, it induces vasodilation. So some patients has also slightly hypotension. And because of M receptor blockade, clopromazine have uh, has anticholinergic effects. The patients will show some symptoms like joint mouse, tachycardia, blurred vision, even constipation in the GI tract. You know, it also blocked dopamine receptor in the um, mammotrophic dopamine pathway. So maybe it induces some adverse effect on the endocrine system like hyperprolactinemia, genicomastia, aminoria. Glycatoria syndrome. Do you understand this? Yeah, it means um, pause of menstruation, but um, lactation. This is, is this is syndrome. Yeah, and uh, it, it also has effect on the. Mm, male libido, yeah, the effects on the male libido may result from increased prolactin or from increased peripheral conversion of androgens to estrogens. And clopromazine in some patients may be also induce some hypersensitivity. Once some patients has taken a large dose of clopromazine, maybe induce some acute toxicity of clopromazine. So at that condition, try to take some uh, symptomatic treatment, including you know to um, correct hypotension caused by clopromazine by using not epinephrine, you know. Okay, 
just now you finished the study of chlorpromazine. It uh, worked as the representative drug of first generation antipsychotic drugs. Actually, there are many agents of first generation antipsychotic drugs. And now there are also some other secondary second generation antipsychotic drugs. They also caused by they also caused by atypical antipsychotic drugs like clozapine and risperidol. They can selectively inhibit dopamine 4 receptor and serotonin receptors, having lower risk of extrapyramidal reactions, especially this clozapine can selectively inhibit the dopamine 4 receptor. You know, this dopamine 4 receptor mainly locates in mesolimbic and uh, uh, mesocortical pathway. Risperidone, it is more potent than clozapine. So in the treatment of negative, you know, type 2 schizophrenia, you know, the first generation antipsychotic drugs all usually are invalid. But this clozapine and the risperidone, they are also effective for the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Salpiroid. This drug selectively inhibits the dopamine 2 receptor in the mesolimbic and mesocortical areas of the brain, producing lower astrospinal adverse reactions compared with clopromazine. Okay, and this slide uh, introduces some supplemental knowledge of antipsychotic drugs. Drug selection. Second generation agents like risperidone are generally used as a first line therapy for schizophrenia because they have relatively less, very low risk of eliminating EPS associated with the first generation drugs. Approximately 10% to 20% of patients with schizophrenia have an insufficient response to all first and other second generation antipsychotics. And only clozapine, maybe it is effective to control the respiratory schizophrenia. And this drug has a mimic, uh, minimal risk of EPIs. However, its clinical use is limited to refractory patients because of serious adverse effects. You know, it has adverse effect on about, you know, full bone marrow suppression, even induced seizures, also static hypotension. Because of this adverse effect, its clinical use is, is limited. Just the yearly use for refractory patients. You have studied the antipsychotic drugs. To help you to understand this disease and the drugs, I have two cases to you to analyze. First one, a 24-year-old man employed as a policeman locks himself in an interrogation room, waving his handgun and yelling incoherent statements such as, they aren't going to take me alive and get off my head. His partner tells the policeman chief that the man has been acting strangely, talking about a comparison against him by the other policeman, and arriving for work in dirty clothes and unshaven. He was overheard talking and arguing with himself in the locker room that morning. And the partner says, they almost got into a fight just minutes ago. 
because the partner wouldn't agree to suit him when he insisted that he wouldn't be hurt and was immortal. A medical emergency team arrives on the scene, and at a moment when he is sitting in the corner, covering in fear, they forcibly enter the room, disarm him, and inject haloperidol into his side. He is transported to the locked ward of a psychiatric hospital and diagnosed with paranoid paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah, paranoid schizophrenia. It is just one form of schizophrenia. Now let's look at the discussion. Actually, schizophrenia affects about one in a hundred males and can be one of the most dangerous of all mental disorders, as it causes those it affects to lose touch with reality. They often show signs of confusion, inability to make decisions, auditory hallucinations, delusions, neglect of personal hy hygiene, strange statements or behavior, and changes in eating or sleeping habits, energy level or weight. In the paranoid form of this disorder, schizophrenics develop delusions of persecution or personal grandeur. Personal grandeur. The first sign of paranoid schizophrenia usually surfaces at age 15 to 30. The, and the schizophrenia is much more common in males than females. There is no cure, but the disorder can be controlled with antipsychotic medications such as haloperidol. Haloperidol is a good choice for acute psychotic episodes, as it is rapidly absorbed and has a high bioavailability after intramuscular injection with plasma levels reaching their maximum within 20 minutes after injection. Actually, this agent, it is one of butyrophenones. It also is the first generation antipsychotic. Another case, yeah, actually for you, it is a question to answer. Chlorpromazine has been prescribed for a patient with a schizophrenia, and the patient has been taking the drug at usually effective doses for about six months. Today, he comes to the hospital with other medical conditions that would require surgery and the administration of other drugs, and we decide it is unwise to stop this chlorpromazine and run risk of psychotic behavior while we perform other intervention. What other signs or symptoms that the patients may also have or acquire as the result of surgery and drug therapy are mostly likely to be affected beneficially by the continued use of chlorpromazine? Now, this is the background of this question. And, you know, the question is, what other signs or symptoms are most likely to be affected beneficially by the continued use of chlorpromazine? Remember, chlorpromazine, it is one agent of the first generation of thiocyanogens. It is the prototype drug in phenothyridines. It is also indicated for managing nausea and vomiting in both adults and children from a number of causes, including some disease or drugs. The drug can be administered orally, rectally, or 
intramuscularly for this very purpose. And some phenol cell this with venture anti-emitic activity, such as proclopyrazin and promethazine, are usually used inside. Regardless, the anti-emitic mechanisms appears to involve blockade of dopaminergic receptors in the chemoreceptor trigger zone of the brain's medulla. So here, you know, the answer should be C, nausea and vomiting. The other signs, epilepsy and the risk of seizures. Hypotension, urinary retention caused by abdominal surgery, dry mouth caused by antimuscarinic drugs used to prevent intraoperative uh, bradycardia. You know, this may be uh, some adverse effects caused by continued use of clopromazine. Understand? They are not be affected beneficially. Try to understand the question. But notice, in general, phenocyanidines are not used often for managing emesis or nausea. That is in part because of the risk of excessive sedation, ex extra pyramidal reactions, orthostatic hypotension, and occasional clot. Uh, cholest, uh, occasional cholestitic jaundice. Nowadays, we tend to turn to other dopamine antagonists like metoclopramid. You will study when you study it, uh, the drugs for GI tract. You will study this agent. Uh, cannabinoid or uh, serotonin receptor blockers. Okay, till now, you finish to study antipsychotic drugs, especially clopromazine. It is the representative drug. Its pharmacological effects, including the mechanism of its action and the therapeutic applications, and adverse reactions, especially EPS. All this knowledge are more important for you. So here, maybe you want to know what drugs can be used to treat mania. Go to study next section. I will teach you.